how to fill out a listing agreement in Texas. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the residential real estate listing agreement exclusive right to sell, which is a Texas Association of Realtors form. In other words, a standard listing agreement. And I have to put a full disclaimer in here. I am by no means advising you on any specific transaction or situation or anything like that. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. And if you need help with the specific transaction you're working, you should go seek that from your broker. Now, that being said, let's dive into the video. So you'll see it here on the screen. We've got the most up-to-date as of this recording version of the Texas listing agreement, starting with parties. So we got seller and then we got their information. So you'll list all parties to the transaction here on this agreement. You want their full legal names. You want their addresses. It's good to have some contact info on there, email fax. I don't know if anyone uses fax anymore. So just put the emails there for all the sellers involved in the transaction. Then you have broker. So that's your brokerage. Put your brokerage name and then uh, address, phone number, etc. on that best point of contact. Um, and I, I mean, I'm the point of contact. That's at least what I put there as far as number, email, etc. Property. So property is, you're gonna wanna look up the legal description. Very important that you make sure you're listing the correct property. So a lot, you, and by the way, you can pull, pull this on your tax records, um, you know, as far as what the lot and block number is. Um, so just pull that up on the tax records. You'll be able to do that through your MLS and uh, you'll figure out the lot, the block number. Sometimes it's a number, sometimes it doesn't really look like a number, but just use what's there on the legal description as far as lot and block. And then uh, description, that would be what's after the lot and block. So whatever the legal description is, it might be short, it might be long. Um, addition in the city of, so what city is it in? And then what county, and then otherwise known, or known as what so that's the address that you know most people will refer to the property as so the street address so uh the street number the the street name and then zip code right so street address zip code hopefully that all makes sense then we go on to improvements which by the way i mean this is a residential listing agreement like i mentioned uh, for other property types there may be something different for instance commercial listing that's a different property type so this is mainly going to be used for houses or anything otherwise uh, that would be considered a, a residential listing so we've got property and by the way it's important to understand what uh the property actually consists of so read the note on improvements and accessories and you definitely want to convey that information you know so that people understand you can't just start removing things i mean tv mounts is a very common thing that sometimes gets removed it's important to understand you know what is attached to the property um you know is part of the property except for exclusions right so that's what this is here for so it says the property improvements and accessories will be retained by the seller and must be removed prior to delivery so that's if there's anything that might be considered an improvement or accessory if the seller wants to keep it they have to name it here they have to specify you know which ones are going to be removed if anything at all otherwise you can't just start removing stuff um you know that would be a problem right so i mean one example too is uh besides the whole tv mount thing chandeliers right if you're dealing with the high-end house it's got a really nice chandelier you know clarify that the seller's not intending to keep that because if they are you got to have that spelled out here and even more importantly later you want to make sure that that information is conveyed to the person purchasing the property because that needs to be reflected as well in that agreement so page one very simple and you know as you'll see with these pages they all require initials the you know person signing on behalf of the brokerage so if that's the listing agent is going to sign there and then uh each seller is going to i mean initial at the bottom not sign and uh signatures will be at the end here uh and then uh you know residential listing concerning um this depending on what platform you're using it might pre-fill this for you you might have to fill in the first one but you know this is where you're putting the agreement is between your brokerage name uh and then the parties so basically whoever's name is here that's who the agreement is between so xyz realty comma buyer one comma buyer two that's what would go there because you know it's saying that that it's all part of the same agreement here with all these subsequent pages and you'll see that at the top of each one 
Now, let's move on here. And what you'll realize too is like literally this is just filling in the blanks. So once you understand what each of these blanks are, it's you know pretty simple to understand. Um, so owner's association is the property in one or not. So check the correct box with that. Listing price, what price is the property going to be listed at? So that's the price that it's going to the market. And then what is the term? So that's the date the listing begins and then the date the listing will end. So, um, you know, make sure you're filling in the correct dates as far as that goes, um, you know, according to when the property is ready to. Something I like to just, you know, point out is, hey, if there's some prep work needed for the property, make sure you're not putting yourself in a situation where it's got to be on the market like now, even if the property is not ready. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're considering that when uh, figuring out what the listing dates are, you know, because ideally by the t by the listing date, the property is going to be ready to go and hit the market. And also, I'll just side note: it's important to be familiar with what your MLS rules are as far, far as that goes, because um, typically the, there's an agreement you have with your MLS to where um, a, a listing needs to be uploaded within a certain time frame once you you know have a signed agreement. So be aware of all that, but you know, the, I. I I don't like to list properties that are not ready to go. I like to make sure that, you know, I'm factoring that into the dates. So broker compensation. So that's where you're gonna note, hey, what? how is your broker getting paid here? You've got an option for percentage of sales price. Um, you've got another line in box there potentially, you know, if there's any like fees associated with the listing, uh, stuff like that. Um, probably good to get your broker's input if you're gonna even use that second line. But, you know, first line's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, self you know, what percent commission? You wanna be sure you're accounting for both sides in this. So whatever the cooperating broker fee is and whatever fee you're charging, I'm not gonna tell you any specific number because that is 100% up to you and your brokerage technically. But um, make sure you're accounting for both sides of the commission and whatever this percentage is. Now, scrolling down, there's not really much more to be filled in, but I would tell you, be familiar with what this says if not, for no other reason, because if a client asks you as you're getting this knocked out, you don't want to be stumped with their question. You should know verbatim every single thing that this agreement says. And honestly, it's only 11 pages. I know contract language isn't the most exciting thing for most of us, but you've got to know what the heck it says that way. You know, you're Johnny on the spot when someone asks you a question about what it is they're signing here. But like I said, cool thing is you're not writing all this. This language is already written. You're just filling in blanks. How crazy is that? Um, so yeah, get familiar with this. Um, and then yeah, other fees reimbursements. That's if there's anything there. Otherwise, you're gonna leave it blank. Um, if there's not protection period. Um, this is effectively to protect your commission. Probably the easiest way to say that, but again, read all this. Um, so however many days that is, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, whatever the protection period is, um, you know, if you're not really sure what to put there, wouldn't it be bad to ask uh, perhaps your broker if they have any recommendation. Uh, by the way, on that note, to me it's crazy that you're seeking this information on a YouTube video. Not, not to say that's bad or anything, but like, it just makes me wonder, like, what does your brokerage have in terms of helping you through things, like such as contracts? Because if the help's not in place with that, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, what other uh, help or resources you may be missing out on just by not having that. Uh, so food for thought there. I say that because where I operate my business, we have a weekly contracts class. Our broker team puts on, there's Q&A. Um, they get everyone up to speed real quickly on contracts, even those newly licensed. So if you don't have that, it's kind of like a head scratcher for me. Uh, but anyway, back to this, I'm gonna keep helping you out. Uh, listing services. So um, this is saying what happens as far as getting it listed on the MLS. So you gotta check the appropriate box. So first box, broker will file a listing on one or more multiple listing services. And then you gotta check a box uh, A or B if you use that one, or you got another option here. So option one or two, either you're gonna file it on the MLS or not. So check the appropriate box, but if it is filed on the MLS, you need to select the appropriate box A or B. So A is a broker will file listing on one or more MLSs by the earlier the time required by MLS rules. So I already gave y'all a hint on that or five days after this listing begins, right? So notate the 
the date the listing begins and make sure that uh, you know you're moving in accordance with what you put on here. Seller authorized broker to submit information about this listing and sell property to the MLS. So they have to authorize that on the listing agreement. Um, and you got another option here, seller instructs broker not to file this listing with one or more MLSs until however many days after the listing date begins for the following reason or purpose. Um, so, and again, it, it notes, hey, don't check this if the MLS prohibits it. So that's why I made the note, hey, be familiar with what your MLS's rule is according you know, to that. But hey, if there's some prep work needed, you might be able to use this box if it's in alignment with your MLS rules to delay the, the date that it's actually posted online. So that's one way to go about it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep going to where the rest of the blanks are on this thing. So scheduling companies, um, this is if there's a third party involved with setting up showings. Um, you know, some of the ones in Texas, it might be showing time, it might be CSS, it might be broker bay, but I'd get familiar if you're not already familiar, what are the, what's the standard showing services that, you know, listing agents are using in your market and make sure that's on there. They gotta be on here. And then you've gotta have the authorization if there's a key box, very important. Make sure the correct box is checked because you have to have the seller's permission to do that. And by the way, this is an especially big deal uh, if the property's tenant occupied. Like you actually need a written agreement from the tenants in that, and that usually ties to what they already had in place with their lease. But I'm not gonna even go into there other than making note of that, be very aware. Um, if it's owner occupied, vacant, that's gonna be the easiest scenario by far. Um, and so this is showing, hey, what are cooperating brokers gonna get compensated? So you got MLS participants and non. You can differentiate between what each of those two parties will be compensated. So again, that's up to you and the seller, what y'all are gonna do in the way of a percentage. Um, percentage is probably gonna be the most common. Um, and I wanna note sub-agent, it's not really a thing uh, anymore. I'm not really, uh, I don't know why they still are even on here on the MLS, but that's not really something you tend to see. I'm not even get, go, gonna go into explaining it, but you know, that can actually be left blank, um, you know, if if that's what you decide you want to do, um, and then otherwise you would put, hey, what is the you know broker representing the buyer going to get compensated? What's the you know if they're a part of the MLS or not? So that's going to be the portion. And by the way, you already accounted for the full commission, uh, you know, previously all the way up here, and so this is the portion that of that full amount that will be going towards the other broker if applicable um in your intermediary so um you're gonna want to check this box um you know provided that you don't want to you know not work with uh, another agent from your brokerage if they happen to bring the buyer and that's what it means it means your broker is allowed to be the intermediary between both parties, um, in which case each one's gonna have their own agent with the brokerage. So um, you're probably gonna wanna check box A. Otherwise, um, you know, it's gonna be tricky if you uh, had a, someone who wanted to buy it represented by an agent with your firm. Um, and then <clears throat> this is uh, some more check boxes, broker authority. So box, 6A1 is checked, broker is authorized to display the listing on the internet without limitation unless one of the following is checked. So um, seller has to specify if they don't want the listing to be displayed on the internet or um, does not want the address of the property displayed on the internet. So uh, I probably wouldn't, I mean, it depends on the seller and their situation, but um, yeah, I mean, if you see a listing online, that's definitely not a box that was checked on these. So probably self-explanatory um, and then Box uh, or section C here is going to specify, hey, what are the financing terms that a buyer can bring to the table that, a sell that the seller would consider? You know, otherwise, like how can you market the property? Because these are options on the MLS as far as those details. So you want to check whichever is applicable to the property. I mean, conventional is very, I mean, it's the most common essentially in cash. Uh, and then you got VA, FHA. Texas Veterans Land Program uh, owner financing, other if that's applicable. So uh, these first four are definitely the more common ones, but know the details on the property and the seller's goals with it. So you can select the appropriate boxes and all the way down here and kind of while I'm scrolling another 
note uh, that I want to make mention of is like, I mean, if you're newer to the business, do you have a mentor? Because that's a, a big component of making sure these are done correctly. I know when I started in the business, I didn't really have a formal process. I was paired up with the mentor, even though I was with the biggest brokerage in town, they didn't really set me up with someone like that. Um, and so standard practice where I run my real estate business, you get paired up with the local mentor. And one of the biggest things they help with is exactly what we're doing here, looking at the real scenarios, filling out the forms, making sure you got another set of eyes so you can go into that appointment with confidence. So if you could use that, you know, you got a, a way to connect with me in the description below. So check it out, schedule a call. I'd love to have a conversation to see how we can help if you know that would be helpful. So uh, seller representations, uh, paragraph 12 here. So this is stuff that I would really have the seller read through so that if any of this is applicable, you can have that correct information because you definitely don't want to have any guesswork here. So um, again, only a short amount of blanks. So sellers current or not delinquent on any loans, yada, 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 except so yeah, they would put the details there if applicable. Uh, same with the liens and then um, I mean, if there's a if it's a corporate relocation or anything like that, that's where this would be used. And then uh, public improvement district, um, municipal utility district, or other statutory created districts providing water, sewage drainage. That's something the seller will be aware of it if if that's the case. If not, you know, it's essentially blank. And then scrolling all the way down. Special provisions. Uh, I would definitely get your broker's permission to use anything in the way of special provisions because you don't want to get to a point where you're writing contract language. You know, we're not allowed to practice law as real estate agents. So definitely going to say get broker's permission. But uh, I have used this before um, to specify that um, essentially we want to see pre-approvals with the offers. And so, you know, that's something that, you know, can be added into there. And again, get that verbiage from your broker. It might be something along the lines uh, that a seller requires uh, pre-approval with all offers or something like that. Um, but again, get your broker's permission before writing anything in that if you were to use it. Uh, and then addenda, we got addenda. Um, that's anything that's added to this listing agreement. Uh, a very common addenda that you're going to want to have is IABS information about brokerage services. That's going to be a requirement. Uh, seller's disclosure is usually going to be a requirement. So I'd have that completed unless it's one of the legit reasons uh, to not have one, which most of the time that's not the case. So, uh, and by the way, very important that your seller's disclosure is not filled out at all by you. It's got to be 100% filled out by the seller. You don't want any liability for having filled any portion of that out whatsoever because they're disclosing details about the property they're going to know from their first-hand experience or you know they have the option if they don't know you know any details regarding certain things um and then if applicable the rest of these uh if applicable so you'll want to select whichever ones are applicable for instance if there's an on-site sewer facility like a septic um, that would be applicable there and you'll want to get that extra form completed um, same thing with the rest of these key box, auth key box authorization by tenant. You know, I kind of mentioned that one already, but whatever additional forms are applicable to the property will go there. And then, um, yeah, some additional language here. If the seller is a foreign, a foreign person as defined by federal law. So basically if they're, um, you know, non-resident alien individual, or I mean, you know, someone who's who this would apply to that you've got to notate that because there's a tax ramification with that essentially so again that's something where the seller can look at that and select the appropriate box that would be the best thing and then um, you've got signatures here so broker's printed name license number make sure all the details are there you're either selecting broker signature or broker associate signature so uh, if you're the associate and you're allowed to do that go ahead and select that um, you know at least that's probably what you would want to do uh, and then seller printed name seller signature same thing if there's two of them and a couple more notes on this by the way um, I mean that's the agreement it's actually pretty simple and straightforward once you've filled this out one two three times it's just gonna be like natural and again one of the things that's gonna help you the most is to, to actually read through this 
and then get familiar with the addendas um, and related documents. If there's any uh, broker related disclosures, you're gonna wanna have those as well. Like um, if there's any uh, uh, affiliated service companies, your broker probably has a standard form for that. Wire fraud disclosures, that's probably something they're gonna require too, but know what documents your broker requires and make sure those are completed alongside with this. Last note I'm gonna make for you is, hey, who do you have in your corner? Who do you have to rely on and turn to as you're navigating transactions? Because one of the scariest things is like, to be young on your journey in real estate, getting your business off the ground and to not have confidence and certainty that you have people to turn to to ask questions as you're getting the forms filled out. Um, like where I run my real estate business, I have a whole team of managing brokers to turn to, literally 14 uh, Texas managing brokers at this time. I can I can get help with uh, from them within two or three minutes from seven to seven seven days a week, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., seven days a week, I get real-time help and support, and I'm not relying on one person to be there for me. So do you have anything like that? Because if not, like it's a crazy thing to have to turn to YouTube to get that help. And again, I'm glad that I can you know, help and educate and walk you through this, but like seriously, if, if you can't get help with forms in that fashion, like it makes me wonder what else uh, might be uh, missing. You know, Where else might the holes be? Our broker team, like they literally go the extra mile. They do a class every week, fast track to six figures. They want to help as many people as possible go from where they're at today to six figures in real estate if they're not already there. So that's a business planning class. But they're doing stuff like literally every single day to help to make themselves accessible and available. So if you don't have that, if you don't have mentorship, if you don't have someone to turn to to help and review your documents in your current situation, do yourself a favor and book a call with me. There's a link in the description below. No cost, no obligation, but genuinely I'm curious to see how I could potentially help and bring more value to the table than you might be getting at your current situation with your brokerage. Again, nothing against them. I'm sure they're a great person. I'm sure you have a great connection with them some way or another, but again, it just kind of makes me wonder how are you in a situation where you're turning to YouTube for something as important as getting a listing to the market? I mean, listings are leveraged. That's where the opportunity is. And to not have help with something as basic as getting a listing agreement done, it, it really makes me wonder. I hope this was helpful, informative, educational. If it was, hit that subscribe button because I wanna continue to be able to share more tips and resources with you in the time ahead. That being said, Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.